Having trouble with navel orange worm in the orchard? Sidetrack, now miso mating disruption is your best bet to minimize loss and maximize profitability. Used with Tresse's new multi-gender lures for your monitoring program, you can achieve the quality yields you deserve. Contact your local sales rep today. Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Nut Producer Magazine and with May coming around I thought it'd be a great opportunity to refresh your minds on managing walnut husk fly in the orchard and I'm here today with Bob Van Steenwick from the UC Cooperative Extension to give some tips and advice on monitoring and controlling the pest. Control of walnut husk fly uh, in May, the beginning of the season, you would put out your traps which is an uh, apple maggot trap with a monocarbonate bait. You put them out about mid-May. Um, you won't expect to find any flies for a few weeks, but you need a, a few weeks of not, uh, no control, no fly catch. Uh, you would uh, put them uh, about uh, shoulder high, uh, north side of the tree, in the shade. Um, and I always like to put one trap high in the, in the canopy. Uh, they tend to have a higher trap count. Um, if you have historical uh, hot spots in your orchard, usually where there's a little more moisture, a little more shade, those will be the areas that you should place your trap. What you're trying to do is capture your first fly. Once you've got that first fly, it's a signal that the, the population is starting for the year. And that should come around oh, the first to the middle of June, depending on your location. Once you get those first flies, if you're going to spray with something like GF120, uh, then you would start immediately and you would repeat your spray whenever your population began to rise again. So you'll be putting it on every two or three weeks. If you're using the more conventional method of application, the speed sprayer with 25 gallons per acre or 100 gallons per acre, then you would wait, you catch those first flies, you'd wait till the flies, the number of flies start to increase. Uh, significantly increase and then you would put on your first spray. Uh, your, the population will then crash and then in about three weeks later if you have a high population it will start increasing again and you put on your second spray and you'll keep spraying as long as the population continues to rise and then rise and fall. Um, and usually depending on where you are in the state you'll have from one to five applications depending upon the fly density. Um, and the thing to remember that if you do not do a good control, you're putting in next year's flies this year. So you need to have a good control uh, management strategy and it needs to be over a multiple year period. If the flies actually infest the nuts, there's of course one generation a year, but those nuts will become darkened and black. Those nuts cannot be sold for in-shell use and they will have decreased number of sound large nuts, they'll have more shell appearing, uh, you'll lose about a third to a half of the value of those infested nuts. So you could lose as much as uh, maybe a, a quarter of the value of your orchard under a heavily infested orchard. Uh, and more importantly, all of those infested nuts, each one having about 20 larvae inside, will, cause, will go into the ground and emerge the following year and thus you will have another very significant problem the next year. So, um, control is mandatory. Thank you, Bob. Stay current on best orchard management practices by reading Pacific Nut Producer Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgNet.com.